I saw people lighting up the chat about the Sonic statue. Uh, for those who are like, what's the Sonic statue? Uh, there's this amazing story about this. Everyone has the same question. Why? This story in Japan, in the mountains, of this, like, Sonic statue is kind of like on a snowboard. Hidden somewhere in the mountains of Japan. And it's just like in the middle of the woods somewhere. Fifteen years ago, one man made a decision that would, in later years, bring an entire internet community together to locate one of history's last gaming mysteries. Right here in Japan, that is the mystery of the Sonic statue. Done with that totally not scripted walk off camera, it's about time we start our journey across Japan to unravel the mystery of the Japanese Sonic statue. And that's precisely what brings me here to Japan, uh, Tokyo in fact. This is the Meiji Jingu uh, Gardens, Inner Gardens I should say, which is a lovely little walk. Uh, unfortunately, because it's winter when we're doing this, everything is kind of dead. So I'd recommend not coming in winter. But if you need a break from the busy Hirojuku Main Street, I would suggest coming here. Uh, we tried to record the intro there first. Spoilers, didn't go very well. Uh, excuse me. Oh God, can you see me? Maybe we should, maybe we should go somewhere else. This is a uh, cu cut, can we cut? So let's not waste any more time and catch the Shinkansen all the way uh, down the country. So bye. With that final piece to camera done, we caught the bullet train from Tokyo all the way to a town called Nagoya. These trains can reach up to speeds of 200 miles per hour, but uh, not that this footage really does it any justice though. Told you. The okonomiyaki that we had there looked so good, I just had to record it. Mm. But I'm getting sidetracked, let's get back to the actual thing. Our second and final train was from Nagoya to Matsusaki. A train that was a lot slower than the Shinkansen. But finally we broke free from the constraints of the Japanese massive concrete jungles and into more of a rural area of Japan. As we approached Matsusaki, the mountains in the distance were a reminder of the journey we still had to face. And that somewhere in there was that mysterious Sonic statue I'd been ludicrous enough to come all the way here to find. The search for the Sonic statue begins. So, we've just arrived in Matsusaka. Uh, unfortunately, the Sonic statue is all the way in the mountains, which is still about an hour and a half away from here. So we're going to need a different way of getting there. Uh, and something that I think Sonic would be really proud of. Some fast, sporty, you know, um, Zapixes. Also, Japanese, meaning it's small, a very tall guy. This little 850cc engine is actually a K-car, made by Daihatsu and rebranded to be a Toyota. In fact, the whole Pixis line is. And with that, we began our journey into the mountains. There was, however, a slight problem, that being the road. In the city, the roads were completely fine, but in the mountains, as it turns out, the roads weren't designed for anything bigger than our little Toyota Pixis. And in some places, it got quite hairy. Now it makes sense why nobody found this statue. This is crazy. Oh, look at that. that is Jurassic Park. That's like an electric fence. That's like the Dilophosaurus exhibit. <laughs> We've taken the scenic route. I think a lot of people who have went to see the statue have not went this way, I've got to admit. Oh, look at that, what? That's, that's not being used anymore, right? So while I drive through this beautiful yet deadly forest, let's talk about this Sonic statue. First discovered in 2015, completely by accident, by a biker riding around in the Mi Prefecture. And apart from these pictures that were posted, there was literally no documentation of it at all. It's like it didn't exist. A few members of the community dedicated themselves to try and find out more about the statue. They agreed that if any one of them managed to discover its location, it would be kept a secret for fear of vandalism or worse, theft. Though their internet search was turning up nothing, they did manage to find one old blog which had this picture in it. The Sonic statue before it lost its nose, predating the pictures the motorcyclist took. And the date on the blog was from 2009. So it was pretty much anybody's guess how long this Sonic statue had been in the mountains for. Even though this discovery discovery wasn't in itself much, it stirred up a whole new found effort for the community to find where this statue was. And then, judging by the climate and the types of trees that were in the background of the images that were discovered, um, 
and the community managed to find out exactly where it was by Google Maps. They, uh, they, they scoured the area, I'm assuming, <laughs> and managed to find the Sonic statue hiding away in a little country road. That agreement from a while ago uh, was held true, actually. The location of the Sonic statue, only um, a few people were allowed to know of it. They didn't know who owned the statue, who it belonged to, uh, maybe Sega, a local, um, nobody knew. And it wasn't until a little while after that that um, a video or an old commercial for a Sega world in Japan, that statue was found in it. The same pose, Sonic, it looked identical. Who owned the Sonic statue? And more to the point, how did it even get there? Let's uh, drive a little bit closer, shall we? And I'll tell you. Oh my God, there it is. Look at, look at the phone, look at your phone. We're so close. Oh, this looks like it. Is it? There it is. Oh my God. And there it was. After a whole day of traveling, we'd finally made it to the statue. It's still here. I mean, well, I, I don't know what I expected, really. Do you want to get out and see it? Yeah. I ain't, ain't waiting all this time to not get out and see it. There he is. It's actually way bigger than I thought it would be. No, his nose fell off. Did you not know that? He's seen better days. It has to be said, he's definitely seen better days. It's safe to say I was uh, a little excited. I spent the first half an hour taking in every bit of detail. It's a metaphor, really. Like Sonic, the franchise. It's not in a great place. Needs a little bit of tender love and care. He's missing the underneath of his shoe. This is the end of the snowboard that was against the wall at the Sega World. I think that was probably always like that. I don't think that actually fell off. From that image where it was taken in the advert, it was about there. Look at the tree. It's growing around the rope that's holding it up. This was supposed to be like Knuckles' head, somewhere under there. Ornery road, trees. Yep. Yeah. Oh wait, what's that? Oh, Sonic. Didn't see you there. I just like to think that when people look around in the cars, they go, wait, what they do? Wait, what? <laughs> and the more I'm here, the more I get the feeling it's gonna fall on me and that's gonna be my legacy. He was killed by the mysterious Sonic statue. How did it get here? This massive, absolutely massive uh, Sonic statue through, I think it was a Japanese uh, news article who wanted to uh, find out more about it. Uh, the team went to a local village that's not too far away. And they asked a bed and breakfast or a hotel uh, about the statue. And they said that they moved in or they took over the business 15 years ago. This was already here. And it was found out that this very Sonic statue was owned by Mr. Kadeo. Now, when this statue was at the Sega World, it was being auctioned off when a lot of the interior was being renovated and either he or his son decided to take upon themselves and bring it right here. But why here, you might ask? Well, up this road just behind the Sonic statue lies Mr. Kadeo's uh, residence. And he decided to place it here because this country road, road really doesn't have any landmarks. So as a way to welcome people to his house, as well as a signpost, he decided to erect it right here. According to that article, when he did, um, he invited everyone from the local community to uh, just enjoy it, just as he did. He realized that there must have been something special about the statue and uh, he wanted to preserve it and share it with everybody else. And thanks to his story and the legacy that this Sonic statue for years didn't have, but now it does, everyone on the internet could share in one of the last greatest gaming mysteries, physically that is, the mystery of the Japanese Sonic statue. But unfortunately, uh, Mr. Kadeo uh, passed away a few years ago. So this amazing Sonic statue now belongs to his children. And we really don't know what the future holds for this uh, Sonic statue. In that same article, they managed to track down the children uh, who told that story about when Mr. Kadeo put it up and wanted to invite everybody to enjoy the statue. They say that they are open to having it repainted and uh, restored to its former glory. But not only that, uh, Sega themselves have actually, or at least behind the scenes, are trying to look into restoring it. On a live stream on YouTube, the stream was swamped by hashtag save Sonic statue, which provoked a response straight away. There's this amazing story about this, this story in Japan, in the mountains, 
of this like sonic statue where he's kind of like on a snowboard and it's just like in the middle of the woods somewhere. And, and for many years it was a rumor and then more recently people have been like looking into it and actually finding out and putting the clues together. Where, where is this thing? And it's very real. They found it. And uh, so I think that the requests that are coming in are like, you know, maybe find a way to save that statue out in, in the wilderness. Um, I got to admit, I don't know who owns the statue or if Sega of Japan set that up as a deal with somebody. I don't know. Oh, I don't know, guys. Oh boy. Um, but but I, I can tell you that we will certainly um, ask our friends over at Sega of Japan if they know anything about it. Um, and see what they say. And then, not too long after that, uh, when other Sonic statues were unearthed, I think it's Aaron? Is it Aaron? So sorry if it's Aaron or Aaron. Aaron. I decided to give a kind of an update on the Sonic statue. Um, as an update on the other Sonic statue, um, I know we told you guys we would we would love at some point to maybe see what we could do to, to, to try and get it renovated or see if there's anything we can do to help it. Um, obviously, it's not owned by Sega at this point, so there's a lot of other stuff that has to go on behind the scenes to even see if that's possible. So just want to let you guys know we have not forgotten about it, and as soon as we have any news uh, on that, we'll let you know. So maybe this won't be the final resting place for this amazing Sonic statue, a blast from the past of the early 90s. Maybe Sega is working out some of the fine details to try and restore this back to its former glory. I mean, personally, I would love to see it redone and then placed back here. It doesn't need to be taken to Tokyo to put into some sort of Sega World or arcade there. If anybody wants to go find it, I think that's part of the fun. The excitement was building when we were driving up here and see it just emerge around the corner. It was like, oh, there it is, that's it. And I think that's something that uh, Mr. Kadeo would have uh, loved. I mean, as you can see, like we just have an in-depth look at it. There's like so much moss and mold and paint chipping on the snowboard. I mean, we kind of knew that that was there anyway. You got some rusting of the, uh, the actual foundations of the statue. It's been here for 15 years. Hopefully it'll last just a little bit longer until something's done to, uh, to save it. And it's all thanks to the community as well, because without them, this probably would have just stayed here until it crumbled into a mess on top of the road here. In fact, one thing I was wanting to have a look for was to see if his nose was on the floor. <laughs> and if his nose did fall off, it's possible. It could have fallen into the drain. So I think we need a full excavation team. Oh, also I want to say a big thank you to the Bad Nick mechanic for without him, I wouldn't have been exposed to this amazing Sonic statue. And I doubt most of the majority of the internet wouldn't have either. It's kind of like um, one of those. I love it because it's just of the time. I'm just glad that I got to see it like now when it's in its very like temporary kind of phase, its transitional phase from being a completely unknown to now having its own Google map search thing. And that about wraps up the mystery of the Japanese Sonic the Hedgehog statue. What's gonna happen to it? Who can say? Maybe Sega will look after it. Maybe they'll work with the Kadeo family. Hopefully, because it'd be such a shame to see a relic, a, a, a piece of gaming history just neglected and to fall waste at the side of a road. But if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, bye bye. Seeing as you've made it to the end of the video, here's a little easter egg for you. Just as we were about to leave, somebody else pulled up and spent a good while just looking at the statue. We weren't the first people to see the statue and we definitely won't be the last.